Talk Radio. Welcome to another episode of the Artist Hour. We are um, joined here by moguls, if you will, um, <laughs> legends of the Austin, San Marcos, and maybe even the United States area, if I dare say. United States area. At some point. Area. <laughs> um, they throw amazing events. Um, fantastic DJ. Fantastic sound man. Um, Hannah and Cable. I have more to say, but I lost track. <laughs> um, so welcome to the show, everybody. Thank How are y'all doing? Pretty Pre- good. Pretty awesome. good, yeah. Awesome, awesome. I'm pretty congested, so I'm going to sound a little crazy. But. It's all right. They'll forgive you. <laughs> um, I wanted to start start off, um, just go go right into it. Um, what made y'all like want to start uh, doing, a, like throwing your own events? Like, was there a specific event that you attended to or like something that made you like, oh, I could do this too? Do we want to go ethos or chronology? Um, Damn, chronology. Yeah, go chronology. I would say maybe start with your, uh, I would say either I start with like me just going to like the co-op stuff or you start with you going. You should start with that. That has a lot more like rich. It's not just like a, I I threw a (laughs) EP release party, (laughs) but it, it was, it was fun. I mean, people were there, but like that just kind of like. Okay, we'll come back to it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. (laughs) He's playing it down. Why are you playing it down? Cause we'll it we'll has, come back to it and yeah. I'll hype it up. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so um, I grew up in Killeen, and like the only thing to do in Killeen for fun is go to Austin. <laughs> <laughs> so Real fuck. I um I grew up wanting to move to Pearl Street Co-op. Oh wow. Have you been? Yeah, I've been. Yeah, so like that was like my first taste of DIY, especially like, well. I guess before that, I had been going to concerts. Like, I'd been going to small concerts since I was, like, 14. Mm-hmm. Um, I was, like, obsessed with live music. I was, like, yes. I'm, like, uh, mutuals yeah. with Mitski on Instagram because, like, I don't know. I was with Mitski? Like, Casual. Yes. That's hard. <laughs> yes. That's Casually hard. dropped that. <laughs> For real. Slight plug. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, um, yeah, so I was going to concerts for a long time. Before I actually moved to San Marcos, I went to a house show in San Marcos before COVID. This was like, what, five years ago? Mm-hmm. Maybe more. And like, it was dope as fuck. It was this place called Peach House. And like, oh, the floorboards was jumping. They had like liquid lights. I was like, oh, this is lit. Like, yeah. San Marcos is lit. Right? So then, <laughs> <laughs> so then like, I started going to like the DIY stuff in Austin. And like, this is like right after COVID. So like, it's kind of like chill most of the time. It's still yeah. like, like not picking up yet. Yeah. yeah. So there was like, nothing in san marcos when i moved there like it was dead yeah for i remember it being dead as fuck yeah um but i was just going to a bunch of stuff in austin i had a lot of friends from the co-ops it was like super fun i think the very first co-op show i went to i was in line to see amygdala Uh and like i met this guy in line his name is trevor he plays in the band fawn okay we just talked about like screamo for like fawn's from san antonio right yes they're super awesome they played all right, I'll come back to that. Yeah, yeah. Chronological. Uh, sh- shout, chronological. Fun. chronological. Shout out Fawn. Shout out Fawn. But yeah, I just had friends from that scene. And like, and then I met Caleb like two years ago mm-hmm. and kind of was, I kind of put him on. Yeah. Damn. It was funny because like, <laughs> like she was like, yo, do you know where to, like where the stuff's happening here? And I was like, yeah, you know, and, but it was like, I think it was a show at like the porch or something and like no well shade to the porch no shade to local bands <laughs> <laughs> we met in san marcos at babes yeah the coffee okay. shop oh yeah. we were complete strangers oh wow just yeah. walked up That's and i was like hi hi <laughs> well i went no i was with my other friend and he complimented my friend's earrings and then we all were talking i just i just had to find a segue in <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's funny as hell. But yeah, um yeah, and then so like I was taking him to shows in Austin. We were like going to shit. Um we were just having fun. And like um and then he did his EP release party because he had this EP with his friend from Memphis. Yeah. His name is D? Yeah, D. Uh, D. Yeah. I don't know what rap name he goes by anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out D. Shout out, Shout out to Davies. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he wanted to throw an EP release party. 
you should yeah i so (laughs) i basically it was this uh interesting line of the things that happened where basically i just sat there in memphis and like what 20 20 30 miles south of memphis in some random like garage and for like two or three weeks just sat there and like recorded my homie over like just crazy sampled beats that i would just stay up all night making this was back when i was like prescribed adderall oh shit yeah that that, that lock in yeah Yeah, yeah. i would just lock the fuck in for like the entire night and would like he would basically record for like an hour and a half and then i would uh just he would go to sleep or something and then i'd be at like six in the morning i'd tap him and be like yo check this and he'd be like <laughs> I, this is this is music <laughs> but, right. yeah can i interject right there huh can i interject sure go for it <laughs> his production is actually crazy like oh, really? when i met him in the coffee shop and he told me that he was a producer i was like oh brother <laughs> i was like ah oh, whatever oh you make music <laughs> You suck. SoundCloud. <laughs> but then, like, I opened his shit, like, I think the same day, and I, like, played some of his music. I was like, oh, I was wrong. Damn, you stood corrected. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's built different. Hell yeah. His music is awesome. So were you um, were you from Memphis at all? Like, how how the Memphis thing? Uh, Yeah, I ba- like, North Mississippi, I bounced around, but then, like, once I, once I got, like, my full independence, I started kind of, like, basically staying in Memphis, and... uh yeah, just uh, like for two or three years, as soon as I got out of high school, well, a year, and then it was just a couple years of just being in Memphis and kind of like couch surfing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and didn't really meet anybody because it's a pretty closed off city. But I mean, like, I, 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 the basically the infrastructure influenced most of the like art that I made at that point. Okay, that's one of the main things I still think about. Like the like that's where FedEx is, and so it's like looking at the plate. Like, what we went back and there were like we were trying to stargaze but there were just fedex planes like the <laughs> entire <laughs> oh, fuck. all night just flying really fucking low that is it's wild. funny because we were trying to see the meteor shower yeah so i was like you oh, saw fedex I, was, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I was one of them flight radar kitties i would just sit there with flight radar open and be like hmm that is another MD-11. <laughs> on, on some Hank hey, shit. Our, yeah. My cousin fucking loves that shit. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> He's always on that shit. Yeah. Okay, so y'all, so y'all met mm-hmm. um, at the coffee shop, and then... Oh, yeah. So then what, what led to... Oh, y- and y'all obviously, like, started, like, hanging out more and whatnot, yeah. but... Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, wait. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, are we talking about the shows? Are we talking about our relationship? Both. Wait, well, what it, led us to what? Led us to, like, start, like, doing, like, shows together. But oh. relationship as well, too. Yeah. Okay, well, we're wait, definitely so. getting there because like the yeah. EP release thing was like the first event thing that we kind of like did to get. Obviously, it was his show, mm-hmm. but like I was healthy. Yeah, yeah. Help it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really wouldn't have been able to do it without it. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so basically, it ended up getting signed to a label, and so I was like, okay, well, where I got to do some sort of promo for this? Like, I got to do a, like a, a release thing. So uh-huh. I hit up Studio Sam Martian, uh, ripped the place, but the the spirit still goes on. Uh, Sherman's really chill, uh, and, uh, through a show there, it was, like, I, I rented it out, no cover, people could come, uh, just played Aux the entire time, and then, uh, did a playthrough of the show every, like, 15 minutes to the hour, mm-hmm. and, uh, that was the first, like, show that we were both involved in, in San Marcos, and I think it was kind of quiet for a little bit after that, because we were both just kind of like, what do we really want to do with it? Yeah. Well, I was. I think Hannah kind of had the idea already. But to, like throw a show? Well, like what she would do, like what what a show of yours would be like. Oh. Yeah. So um so where was that? Where was that show at again? That was the Studio San Martian. It was uh, up on like Ranch Road 12, like uh West San Marcos. Oh, okay. like the pita shop and Yeah. The it's it's, oh, it's, gotcha, it's gotcha, where gotcha. Slack had Slack had a show there one time. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Okay. Um so then that happened um I'm tr- okay, so I don't mean to cut cut y'all off, but whenever who was someone was it your birthday that Booting performed at? Uh, and that tiny the secret yeah little, yeah secret room secret room that's, that's the, the first th- I've ever seen y'all. Yeah, that's oh yeah. yeah okay so yeah secret room is the next step. Oh really? Damn. Yeah. So like <laughs> I was tapped in. <laughs> you just decided. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> My bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. So like he had his EP thing, and then like in like December there's this place called Secret Room that was like in the back of Gil's Broiler, mm-hmm. and like. They had like these like Instagram ads that were like, 
apply to be part of Secret Room. And I was like, oh, creative director Caleb would like that. So I sent it to him. <laughs> and then, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, it, I, I creatively directed there. Um, cause it was basically, <laughs> so it was, uh, it was a spot and they were trying to do posters and like, it was doing all right, but it was basically just drop ship posters in the back of a thing, mm -hmm. brick and mortar. Uh, it was somebody's like first like business venture and he put a lot of money into it. And then he was starting to try and get people to come through and like, you know, help him out. And I was like, I honestly definitely want to see what I can do with this. For sure. So... <clears throat> We put together a, a, a team and uh, just started trying to do, like, promo. We were doing different uh, sort of, like, we're trying to, not like a magazine necessarily, but kind of, like, release things as if it were. Yeah. So we did this one thing, and it was, uh, it was kind of like a promote the posters. So we found a couple posters that we thought were cool. And we also got some, like, art com commission done. Uh, people donated it, I guess. And we uh, we did uh, face paint and like makeup that like resembled those, uh -huh. and that was all Hannah. Hannah basically did. Man. How long was that? You were sitting in there doing makeup. Damn, I don't know. It, it was, was a few hours. Yeah, yeah. three or four wow. hours, and I, then uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. We did a, a, a photo shoot with it, posted that. <clears throat> that was pretty fun, and that was in promotion of your vendor market that you came up with. That's true. Uh, which is, I guess, the next, like, show that, that, uh, I was kind of just working with Secret Room on that one, and then Hannah came in, because Secret Room was a little bit, uh, I'd say, I'd say it was, we were having trouble getting organized. Yeah. But, uh. It looked crazy in there. There was posters and crazy shit everywhere. It was a wild ambiance. Yeah. It was a very wild ambiance, but, uh. It was a vibe, though. Yeah, yeah. It was cool as fuck, I will say. And we did vinyls and vendors, and it was basically we'd play play vinyls the entire night, have a vendor market. It went, it was an, an incredible success. I mean, monetarily, not that much came from it, but people knew where Secret Room was, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and then we started throwing shows there, and uh, that was where it was mine, uh, Courtney and Toby. Shout out Courtney and Toby. All of us have like early April birthdays, so we were like, yeah, we got to throw a show there. And so Toby really fucked with uh, with uh, Lil Budang. I had heard of him, but I didn't actually hear much of his music until I started looking at him. And I was like, wait a second. Like, I had I, never seen him perform. Yeah. Toby but, was like how I found <coughs> out about Lil Budang. Yeah. Okay. Toby put us all on. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the goat. Yeah. <laughs> My first Shout time Toby. meeting Toby was a Lil Budang, like, playing in, what is it, Sean Patrick's? Like, that yeah. stage? Was it, was it Frights and Sounds? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was Frights and Sounds like three years yeah. ago? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. And that was the first time that we saw him, and I was like, this dude is a performer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's ridiculous. Yeah. Performs his ass off. So ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so we. We uh, love you. Love you, Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I asked him, and he was like, do y'all have 18s? And I was like, I, I mean, we can probably find 18s. <laughs> So, Typical. Yeah. So Bastard. It was literally like the first show that I actually like tried to figure out sound for uh, ended up being like 12 inch, uh, 12 inch powered mains, two passive 18 subs. No, it was just one passive 18 sub and then a 15 main that I had to use because I didn't understand that like you needed an amp. So I had to have a powered, uh, okay. had to have a powered uh, 15 to power the sub. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a tiny, tiny room, so that bass was plenty. It was not. And, yeah, that was a wonderful show. And that was the part where it was like, okay, so, like, people actually came to this. People are actually, like, you know. Yeah. Like, there is, there is uh, a, an open market for it. This was, like, at the end of Secret Room, though, so he caught... Like, yeah, yeah, that was the last time I've ever seen of it. Yeah, because yeah. Secret Room after that kind of folded. Uh, the the dude that owned it decided he would go on a nice soul seeking trip through Europe. Uh, Respect, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Understandable. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. We all. Yeah, right, <laughs> literally. Um, so uh, so after after that, you were like, oh shit, this is a this is a huge like because like back whenever I started going to shows, there wasn't anything out there, and especially the stuff that y'all were doing like music wise. Like, I, there was, like, 
only like the music on the square it's like typical like live bands no offense everybody but just like live bands like guitar or like we're just like random like, like cover bands like yeah cover bands and shit like that and like there wasn't like a dj scene in san marcus as far as i know and there wasn't like good like live underground music yeah until i i started going to y'all's events so it's very flattering yeah because like i had no idea literally the only thing i can think of is harmony suites in new Braunfels. this is like I'm gonna age myself. I'm sound like unk as fuck, <laughs> but I was also a baby going to these shows, so not so much. But wh- Christian, wh- uh, Harmony Suites was what 2012. It's an old head ass venue. Dude, it, this was like a long time ago. Is it like a hotel room? Like N- no. So it it was just pretty much like not storage units, but they're just like these like little. It's just a metal building, yeah. but it was only like m- like hardcore, metalcore, screamo. But like they would do like thirty bands. It would start at like five p.m. and go until like two a.m. Yeah, and they would fit like thirty bands, but they would come from like everywhere. Like Shit. like it would like they would like host bands, and then they had like a little like area with like bean bags and shit and, like they were like sl- like bands would like sleep there and shit. It was like on that, wow. but like it was like bands coming from all over. Like That's but that was like. It was wild. There's a huge gap between what y'all did and that. And I think it's really cool because, like, not trying to age myself again, but it brings, it brings like, that energy back of, like, to not, the local not before social media, quote, unquote, because there is very much social media, but just, like, just simply word of mouth. Because I, I didn't even find out about y'all through social media. Yeah. I, f- I found out about you. I went to just literally, literally a random party, and then I heard about the first uh, blood wrestling. Yeah. Oh. And so it was really just word of mouth. That's like crazy. and and so like whenever I went I was like not knowing that y'all had like a following on Instagram already. Like I didn't follow y'all till after the night after the show. Mm-hmm. So I didn't I I went into this not knowing that y'all had like y'all's own following already. And so I was like genuinely like, "Oh, fuck. This is this is like this is sick as fuck." Right. No, yeah. And Instagram's a small world. Yeah, but like I didn't even know that y'all had a, like a following on Instagram. Like yeah. like I literally found out about y'all through a friend. So it yeah. was super random. Yeah, it's just and true. then like it's just like that same energy of just word of mouth just like hearing like, "Oh, there's a band I fuck with from Austin going to San Marcos." And like I used to live in San Marcos, so I'm like Damn, I don't want a reason to go to San Marcos, but if it's like actually a show, if it's popping, I'm if it's going. a show worth the fuck, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go. And it was yeah. worth the fuck, and I went. I had a really good time. I'm so glad. So like, yeah, yeah. I, I like that y'all are able to do that. Like y'all, c- my point being, y'all could survive without social media just because y'all have like that very like foundational following mm-hmm. to yeah. where I feel like y'all put on good bands that have like that natural like energy that attracts people regardless of social media true there so, some- so i just want to say i admire that about y'all it's something i haven't seen in a long time thanks Zach. yeah sure. for sure there's some true tastemakers in san marcos i think it just like the the door needed to be open you know? exactly and it's just one of those things like not a lot of people especially nowadays like post covid they're scared to take risks yeah especially because co- like covid made venues and like spaces as a whole like even like warehouse spaces and shit yeah. everything just went up because like inflation so and shit expensive. so yeah. a lot of people are scared to take gambles on even any kind of like show now yeah like so whenever we find people that are like willing to take that risk like it's refreshing to see because like for a while like it was just like us and a couple other people and then they like not sold out per se but they went to different industries like there was another promotion company whenever we first started that now is like a weed company like they oh. they like do like <laughs> weed related like shows still but it's like all based around like weed yeah. now and so like it's really nice to see that like y'all are meshing genres like how it quote unquote used to be but like y'all bring it to people that are gonna be able to bring that to another generation down the road when yeah. like like the younger kids like that are younger than us you know yeah. i feel kind of i feel kind of like like a sort of like like a sadness that covid kind of because like i remember there like the stories about i never saw it but like the stories about train hoppers going and playing at valentino's you know <laughs> stuff yeah. like that yeah you know <laughs> And it's like then COVID happened, and it's like that, that that generational sort of like like passing down of vibe didn't like okay. it was like skipped. Well, it like yeah, skipped yeah, the yeah, generation. Well, well, like, well yeah. it's even like tracks. it's even like with co-ops too. Like I've been going to co-ops since I was like 17, 18, so like twenty seventeen. I was going off. And, but there was a right? but there was a, but there was a minute where it was dead. Yeah. Like 
dead. Like yeah. like end of 2019, like 2021, it was just there's just nothing going on. So like whenever I say that, like y'all brought like a whole like breath of fresh air, it's in different aspects, and I like admire that about. I, I admire that about y'all because y'all are all like not only in house, but y'all don't have like I, for lack of a better word, like mommy and daddy money. Like this isn't like some kind of like from the ground up, y'all. Like like because it, 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 <laughs> like I've met some people, especially like in this scene, that like I think they're like oh like really really into it for the the love of the game. Like like make not making memories per se, but just like having an impact on DIY culture in central Texas and then it comes to find out they I'm not 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 throwing any shade but like end up getting a job with Live Nation or C3 oh, or something yeah. like that and then they just are like I'm not doing shows no more I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take a back back seat and like it's just it's just refreshing to see that y'all care about every DIY well every aspect like yeah. like I could see y'all doing a insane show with three four thousand people and I could also see y'all doing a show with 100, 200, but y'all would still give it the same amount of attention and energy is, mm -hmm. is what I'm trying to say. Like, it's not like y'all aren't just like, oh, fuck, like we might just break even or oh, fuck, like we might lose some bread. Like y'all give y'all give each show the same amount of attention and, and promotion. Yeah. And, too. The yeah, and like, and, and like dedication. Like Let Hannah tell you about losing bread on a show. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's actually the next part. So like oh, yeah, we're still okay. going chronological. Let's go. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, it's a long. Like, Let's hear it. Okay, so after his birthday show, so like Secret Room kind of like died down, and then like there comes the summer, and my birthday's in July. Mm -hmm. So low key, I was like, damn, like I kind of want to throw a show for my birthday. Like this is something I want. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what do I do? I like posted on my Instagram story. I'm like, guys, would you guys come if I like threw a birthday show? And everybody was like, yeah. Hell yeah. So I was like, oh, okay. I like posted. Who would be interested? Like, <laughs> Instagram bowl. My birthday show. <laughs> Yes or no? <laughs> and my friends in Fawn, so like um, Gio's in Fawn and Trevor's in Fawn and some other lovely people are in Fawn and like Gio swept up and was like, we're down. Wait, let me ask everyone, but we're down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh shit. Like Fawn wants to play my birthday. Like they already had like clout. Mm -hmm. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. So then I was like, wait, I can like maybe actually make this happen. Oh yeah. So like, obviously I was talking to Kaylee. Is this your first solo show? Like. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. This was like the first show I ever threw. Damn. And like, um, I had like, uh, I wasn't going to charge cover because <laughs> like, because like I was like, I've never thrown a show before. Yeah. I don't have like the experience to back it up. So I'm like, I should just fucking do it. Yeah. So like I DM bands. I got Blank Hellscape. I got Omniantia. RIP Omniantia. I don't know if. I don't know if they play shows still, but like they're kind of MIA. But I, I love yeah. them. I haven't seen so them on a bill in a minute. Yeah. yeah. Not, now that you mention it, come they're back. So when you good, see. so talented, so like different. Oh, and Blank Hellscape just went viral for that. Have you seen that video? Yeah, uh, at Empire. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Have, have you seen the video? Uh -uh. You gotta oh put put it in the corner. It's literally Max Deems of Blank Hellscape, like at. Uh, Fuck, where is it? Uh, yeah, I think it's Empire. Yeah, that's it. No, that was uh, oh, that was oh, Hotel oh, Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no. Hotel Vegas. Yeah, no, I've seen it. Yeah, where he brings the speaker out. Should I explain it for the podcast? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. People haven't seen it. So Max Deems opens the back door, and so like there's an indoor part where the bands play, and then there's like an outdoor part where sometimes they have a different thing going on, like maybe like a salsa dance or like a DJ. Yeah. <laughs> so like he opens the back door and he like brings this giant fucking speaker out. Blank Hellscape plays harsh noise. Oh uh, yeah. So it's like. Eh! You, you, you gotta put the one, you gotta put the. Video I would put the video in, but yeah. it's just funny. Oh, okay. No, explain, explain it. It's yeah, fine. explain it. Yeah. So then, there's this guy, and he's like drunk as fuck. This is like just random white guy. He like stands up and he's like trying to like turn off the speaker. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <it's> just, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck, though? Because he's like, that shit was so loud. I was, that was yeah. so hilarious. And then, like, um, this guy, Dylan, I don't know if you guys know Dylan Itala, but he's very popular at the co-ops. He commented, um, 
damn, the condo zombies tweaking out or some shit <laughs> like con- that. The condo, condo zombies. zombies that that's, need that, yeah. that's funny as fuck. I'm going to start saying that shit for real. That shit goes hard, actually. But yeah, so, sorry, I forgot I was telling a story. Yeah. It's okay. Um, that's, what this, that's what this podcast is. <laughs> <laughs> tangents on tangents. I'm pretty sure Blank Hellscape kicked the fucking like, legs out from under the table. They had all their like gear on for <laughs> <after> that. <laughs> What? I, I don't know. I don't know if they did it on purpose or if it was an accident. But like, I just look and there's like an entire table full of just electronics. It had to be over like fifteen hundred dollars worth of stuff. Fuck. Old tape, like vintage tape machines and stuff like that. Oh, They're just laying on the ground, and I'm like, D- uh, is. Uh, <laughs> 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 that's like, wild. No, that's okay. We fix this stuff. I'm like, I'm... damn, that's oh, fried. Wow. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so. At my birthday party, it was Fawn, Blank Hellscape, Omni Antia, and Harley Quinn, and Cable, and also <laughs> Cable. Okay. Because, <laughs> like, there's another band in Texas called Cable, and then there's another electronic artist in, like, Detroit called, like, Caleb Peters, and that's his government name. And he's oh, like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> I'm cutting that out, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't, don't give them no. Wait, God. but <clears throat> is it, like, your distro kid or something? No. No, literally. So basically, oh, like, we'll cut it out too. Don't worry. Just he's explain. A, he's homies with Tommy Fleece, which is who's playing. Thanks for existing on the nineteenth. Oh, right? shit. So basically, we've kind of had to, like, we've been forced to acknowledge each other. That's <laughs> crazy as fuck. Okay, wait. Your doppelganger. We should just tell that story later. Okay, cool. Yeah. We'll okay, yeah. Tell that story later, yeah. Because it's I'll actually edit it around. kind of funny. Yeah. I'll edit it around. Okay, okay. <laughs> so. Cinema. At my birthday, <laughs> it is fun. Omniantia, Blank Hellscape, and Switch, who is now Cinema. I fucking love them so And much. a lot of people were like, like after my birthday, like after like Bloodbath 1, they were like, you should book Cinema, you should book Cinema. I'm like, bitch, I already did. <laughs> Been there, <laughs> done that. There. You missed it. <laughs> Obviously, I'm going to book them again, because they're so fucking awesome. They're amazing. They're, they're like, insane. They're also the homies. Yeah, they're coming on soon. Really? Teaser, yeah. That's so lit. Yeah, I love them so but much. Yeah, I love them. And like, it was just funny. I'm just like, I already. <laughs> yeah, they're not hip. <laughs> they're like, you just didn't know. They're you don't know that they're not on. Cut they're not on the lore. You. The lore. Keep Literally, I'm like, you don't be scrolling the Instagram tagged pics like <laughs> like I do. <laughs> but yeah, so those four bands, and then Harley Quinn and Cable were DJing, and it was fun as fuck. We did oil wrestling. Um, there was no cover. We had hot dogs. And vegan hot dogs. We made this crazy ass promo video that like everybody loved. Um, I don't know if you saw it where I was like walking on like a green screen. It was like a fast forwarded video of like where to park and go to like. Oh no! Oh, I think I did. I think I did. I think I was there actually. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Like a a a PowerPoint. Oh. Reasons why you should come to my birthday party. I did see that. Number one. Yeah, Yeah, I did see that. That's what I'm saying. Y'all's promos, y'all's promo skills is ridiculous. All like, you thank need, you. All you need is a shitty camera and a green screen. Hey, actually, we shot at Alkek. <laughs> yeah. Are oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Um, but yeah. Um, oh, the reason I found Private Park is because like I knew that all of the venues otherwise were gonna be way too expensive. Like mm-hmm. I had called like <laughs> maybe I shouldn't name drop them. I had called a bunch of I'll other venues. It. Yeah, you can, you <laughs> I'll bleep it. I'll bleep it out. I had called a bunch of other venues, and it was like 600, 800, mm-hmm. 1,000. I was like, damn. Like, yeah. I'm already about to pay the bands out of pocket. Like, mm-hmm. I need to save it, money on the venue. They're trying to charge Austin prices. I know. Yeah. I'm like, damn, don't also buy San Marcos. <laughs> no, for real. That's crazy, too. <laughs> but yeah, so Private Park is honestly, like, um, so inexpensive to book. And it's Laura, cozy. the owner, is so cool. It's With so cozy. Shit. Yeah, I love I Private know. Park. Feels like home. It does. Yeah. We're, we're omitting the fact that Hannah basically, like, or Hannah actually just gave those, like, string lights to Laura. Oh, really? The big string yeah. lights. Yeah. Because that was one of the main things was, like, when it comes to being able to do it. Because, okay, wait. Brendan did it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So after I had already booked Private Park, um, Brendan, who's, uh, Brendan Morrow, he's, like, super awesome. His birthday is, like, a little bit before. Is that like your friend? Is that your friend Brandon yeah, or something like that on Instagram? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Brendan Morrow. Yeah, your friend Brendan. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah okay. Sorry, I thought you were asking me who was my friend. I'm like, yes. Oh, he's also <laughs> your friend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was like but, two weeks before. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was like, 
oh, where are you throwing my, where are you throwing your birthday show? And I was a little reluctant to give it up because I felt like I had found a gem. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, like, I wanted to be first. <laughs> but he was like, no, I can be your guinea pig and like, it'll be chill. And I was like, actually, you're right. Let me get rid of this <laughs> trying to gatekeep. in my heart <laughs> and not gatekeep. I can still be a girl boss. Yeah. And like, he actually was so helpful and like let us know like what all we would have needed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So honestly, our my birthday wouldn't have gone as smoothly if he hadn't like done that for us. A lot of he stuff. He let us know that we needed the generator. Mm-hmm. He let us know that we needed more lights. So I brought lights from my parents' house <laughs> that they were not using. My mom's a hoarder. <laughs> um, she'll never see it. <laughs> but like we put the lights up like at like 7 a.m. on my birthday, mm-hmm. where I guess it was technically two days after my birthday. <laughs> We were up there it. at like 7 a.m. because it's like deep summer. Yeah. And so like he was like climbing the trees and shit. And like the birthday party was epic. It was super fun. And then after the birthday party, we didn't want to take the lights down because then we would have had to climb the trees again. Yeah. So I was like, Laura, do you just want them? Hell yeah. I mean, <laughs> you, you throw enough shows there for you to yeah. use them like that, tenfold now. So yeah. that actually like like up the viability of using like private park as a venue like by 10 For sure. times like it was night and day genuinely because that was the main thing is like it was it had been there but people mm. didn't do it because like you have to hook up a bunch of lights and it was just a dark you know a dark grass patch with a with cool yeah. you know at night. yeah at <clears throat> night it was it was just pretty dark yeah. but now that the lights are there it's like an actually like you can use it as a venue. They're like house lights, you know? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, the Fire. reason I found out about it is because Studio San Martian used to do punk in the park there. Oh, wow. I didn't Have even know about that. Have y'all heard of that? No, never heard of that. That, I that was been, a minute like, ago. Yeah. That was a minute ago. See? But Ear that's because I had to ear to the ground. Like, I was listening. <laughs> you were tapped in. Respect. I'm dug Not respect. in. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy as fuck. I pay too much attention. You can't hide <laughs> shit from me. Oh, yeah. But that's yeah. Fire. So the birthday was awesome. I didn't know if I was going to throw another show, but it was so fun. Obviously, I lost, like, I spent, like, $1,000 out of pocket. Because, mm. like, paying for the venue, and I paid all the bands fairly because they, you know, traveled to yeah. be there. Yeah. yeah. So it was just, like, I think everyone should get at least, like, almost $200. And, and, that, yeah. and that helps you maintain longevity, too. like Because, yeah. like, that's going to be, like, a vouch. Like, yeah. like that is a key thing to like always leave a good taste in their mouth yeah. afterwards. Cause like, I can't tell you how many shows we wouldn't have been able to do without voucher, like people vouching, you know? Oh, that's they're, true. Yeah. So they're solid. Yeah. So I feel you. Sometimes I've overpaid, but it's worth it to, you know, everyone walks home happy. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. I mean, you have to think about how many members are in a band. They need exactly. gas money. Like mm-hmm. they need to eat that night. Like, exactly. You know? Literally. Cause like that's the main thing is like when it comes to the performers like you don't have a show unless you exactly you that's know? true that's it's true. an investment yeah yeah can I can I uh, can I interject real quick yeah um can we please talk about the San Antonio Tunnel show <laughs> fuck oh please oh my I love that you were there we he was there too was there <laughs> it was too. crazy you were there to holy crap it was wild we were like ten deep in there <laughs> oh my god. That I, was crazy. I got videos uh, too. I'll be putting right here. I, I was off the K and platforms whenever <laughs> the water started coming through. That was intense. I was. You know, I, I, I got an insane video. That shit looks like we're like in like an apocalyptic situation. That should look like. Can you send it to yeah, me? Yeah, I got you. I literally came in rain boots. Like I'm like I had a pro- fucking premonition or some shit. Dude, that I had rain boots nah, with a flashlight clip to them. That, that was a fun memory though. We all went to was it IHOP after? We went to go eat after and we were like, what the fuck just That was happened? not a fun memory. Okay, yeah. For us. Go, can y'all go into it, yeah. please? Because that that shit was crazy okay. as fuck. So shout out True Step. Uh, this was like the kind of the beginning of true step and we were just like yeah we're trying to throw renegades got four fucking uh, folded horn subs and uh yeah we had we had powered mains at that point mm-hmm. we we're like yeah where can we take this shit like <laughs> there's a generator you know so we uh it was uh true step so it was like calvin uh nick p all those people um and they like just had the idea they found this spot uh urbex thing i don't know who actually found it oh yeah also uh i don't know if he wants us to say his name eh. unknown we can bleep it yeah unknown fourth party uh, <laughs> we're urbexing and found this tunnel and they were like yeah this is a perfect spot to to do a do a renegade and we were like okay cool i didn't see it until the day that we were going there and they were like it's a little bit of a hike 
Like, okay, cool, yeah, whatever. It was adventurous. Yeah. Yeah, I'm 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 young, I'm spry, let's go for it. Yeah. Four eighty pound subs. And then we realized that these are circular drainage tunnels, mm -hmm. corrugated, so every like we're walking and if it's not in the mud is and then there's a five foot drop. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember. Boy, don't I know it. Yeah, and we had to For figure real? out how to get that shit down. And then we finally got it down, finally get everything in there, spent another like hour and a half setting up, a bunch of people like fighting over fucking plugins to plug their shit in because everybody brought some sort of electronic that they wanted to plug in for the vibe. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, like we, we set it up. It was, it, was, it was still like we were still trying to get all that stuff, you know, sort of like situated in terms of setup. Mm -hmm. But uh, we get it set up. One show, one uh, one DJ plays, and then my homie Nick plays. DJ giggles. Uh, I think he was uh, appearing as DJ Die Fam. I'm not sure. Uh, he's playing, and then there's just like a torrent of water coming from the so roof. Like there's like this because it's a drainage tunnel. That show was so it is a drainage tunnel. <laughs> so, like we just look like I. It, the music's loud. I don't really hear it. So he taps me on the shoulder and just points over there. Soy Jacks, like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> just yes, seen, like a fucking like a fucking <laughs> column of it was water. Bloody yeah, bloody that was <laughs> and it was just like, oh shit. It's the perfect way to describe it. <laughs> there's honestly. a timer What's going, and I don't know when it's gonna end. So yeah, I literally I walk up to Nick. I'm like, yo, hey, 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 and he just he's like super upset, but he's just like. Cause and he I'm, just started playing. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I point at it, and he's like, it's like <laughs> "I feel like I feel like you can see some of the faces that were made that night in like the like 2012, like whenever you see like the massive wave. <laughs> <laughs> it was the day after tomorrow for real. It was yeah, scary right? as fuck. Yeah. So like we start, we're like, okay, we got to, and at that point it's fucking pandemonium. <laughs> and There's like evacuate 50 people. All yeah. of the fucking like big ass equipment, everything yeah. that could get waterlogged, Dude. and like you know that five foot drop that you had to get down. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, we're, 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 we're pulling people up and shit. Yeah. I remember that. There's people yelling like, if you want to see this shit ever again, you. Help us move it. <laughs> I had to help lift the fucking generator up there, man. <laughs> yeah. That shit was crazy as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like everybody helped like getting everything to like a safe-ish spot, and then we had another fucking quarter mile. And mm -hmm. that was drainage. And that was where it was starting to start pooling up. So yeah. like Hannah and her fucking clairvoyance <laughs> <laughs> brought boots, so she was fine. She was just a little wet. <laughs> Uh, and I was, I was like, in like, yeah, I was in <laughs> shitty forces, like trying to, oh. like me, uh, OK Quest, well, Javi, I don't know what he's going by anymore. Shout I think out. he's still playing. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. OK. But yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, it's, I, I, we were like, we had to like carry an entire fucking like sub by ourselves. And it was like probably a foot of water at this point. Mm -hmm. So we're like carrying it over the water and we're basically just trying our best to get everything out. And like we, we finally get it out. Surprisingly, nothing's destroyed. Um, we lost we lost two good tarps that day. Yeah, Damn. that's it. They were that my was tarps. More. But like, my tarps. But, 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 but like, but like nothing like big. I we lost a table. We lost a, but a ton of cords. But but nothing like major though. Nothing major. None of the speakers. None of the lighting. Everything. That was impressive because there, there was like y'all having like cardboard boxes on top of it and shit. Like yeah, it was like yeah, yeah. it was a whole evacuation. It was crazy. Bro. Corrupt radio. I remember everything. Thank you. Cool, because um, I don't. <laughs> so, like, after the birthday show, like, me and Christina were already mutuals. Like, I had met her older sister, like, a while back at the co op That's Moon Baby, correct? Yeah. Okay. And her older sister is Andrea, or Babe Drea, 33. Mm. <laughs> um, and, like, I was mutuals with both of them. And, like, Christina reaches out to me, and she's like, hey, would you want to do a collab? And I'm like, bro, yes, the fuck? Hell yeah. So we wanted to do something like kind of more like fall. So we were like, oh, I was like, what about Friday the 13th? Because I felt like nobody was really doing Friday the 13th stuff. Like I felt like mm -hmm. nobody really like apart from like tattoo shops. Like, yeah. Yeah. Nobody was the only like, place I can think of that would do that. Right. I was just like, why is there not like a Friday the 13th show? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So like we came up with Bloodbath. And I think they had done blood wrestling at like the co-ops for like a private party once. Mm -hmm. And I was like, let's do that. 
<laughs> yeah, that shit's badass. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. Um, cause like I got the oil wrestling idea for my birthday from like mud wrestling on Montopoli's bridge for a cowgirl events thing with my friend Lizzie. Oh shit. That sounds nuts actually. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. It was super fun. Wait, was it on Montop or under Montop? On. How'd you get the mud up there? Yes. Well, I didn't throw the event. <laughs> Uh, Sorry, I'm just, just, I'm, just, I'm just like that. That's, mud everywhere, that sounds bro. like a logistical nightmare. That's crazy. I feel like they had dirt in the kiddie pool, and then they poured water in it. Oh, that makes sense. How it wasn't the like the best there? mud. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. <coughs> they all just took turns spitting in it. No, for real. <laughs> took six hours. Yeah. <laughs> they used the water. They used the water bottles. Were used in the making. They, they used the water bottles. <laughs> okay. I thought oh. I was the the the, the goo, uh, I thought I was like the fiend for vaping on the podcast, and I just see the zen. I'm like, okay, we're. I haven't done it yet. Oh, it's just okay. it's just eyeing me. Yeah. I did a zen one time, from my neighbor, but it was like the fancy snooze from like overseas. Oh yeah. I did it like one time, and like, I had to lay down on the floor. I was like, oh. <laughs> I can only do threes, and then and then some dude was like, I posted on my story. And then they're like, you're weak as fuck. I do 15s. And I'm like, okay. Like, <laughs> Is that a flex? Yeah, what? Fucking uh, asshole. <laughs> bro. <laughs> Anyways, go, go ahead. Okay, okay. Blood wrestling. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Um, did the oil wrestling at my birthday. So then we did blood wrestling at Bloodbath. And, like, people really liked that one. Like, mm -hmm. We charged cover because I was like, okay, I'm not doing that thing again where I spend yeah. $1,000. As you should. Um, sure. But, like, we friended the money for the venue. Obviously, we got like doors people. Shout out to my guy Soul, um, because Soul from Chromathaw always brings like the best people to run doors and security for me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And this was the last show we did where we rented sound. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. So like we were just renting like random speakers. That show was fucking badass, by the way. Appreciate oh, for so having fun. me on. There. <laughs> that shit. That shit was so fucking cool. Yeah. It was so fun. Like, there was like maybe like. 500 people there was yeah yeah 500. it was like, over 500 it was people. crazy that was the biggest that we had had well obviously the biggest but that was like bigger than i had imagined it could get yeah it was kind of mind point. blown yeah, yeah. I, I looked around i was like holy fucking shit this is insane yeah. for a, a private like private park for lack of better words like just like a little tiny little fucking section that like has so many people in it that place can hold a few yeah. people yeah it's crazy yeah. i didn't realize the magnitude of it like how big it it actually is like it's spread, <laughs> it's spread out i feel like bloodbath 2 kind of showed us like the capacity of what no shit because i'm just like i don't know if i want yeah. more than that amount of people at private park ever yeah. that shit was yeah. insane that was it was like a little overwhelming <laughs> Pushing a thousand if you round it up. Yeah, there was like, I, I could have sworn at least like 750, like yeah. at least. No, we did the math. I think it was like over 750. Yeah. Holy fuck, man. Yeah. That is or so crazy. Over the whole night. So maybe not all at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. There was a cool at least 400 throughout the whole night, though. But yeah. But we also didn't even use that that real estate to the to the house side. That place, that was basically just That's dark. That's true. Yeah, so That's we, true. we crammed mm -hmm. more people into a smaller spot than we did for the first bloodbath or really anything. That's true. Yeah, true. But yeah, so like after Bloodbath was like a success, we were like, oh, okay, this is lit as fuck. We're going to keep doing this. Mm -hmm. So like Caleb found this listing for speakers on Facebook Marketplace because he's addicted to Facebook Marketplace. Like four days. As we all are. Like it's I'll like wake up in the morning and like <laughs> before we do anything, like I'll turn over and he's like scrolling Facebook Marketplace. If I were a rodent, I'd have my wiry little fingers inside a fucking log and be picking for <laughs> bugs. <laughs> <laughs> So he, you, you be scrolling that shit. Yes, he doom scrolls Facebook, Facebook Marketplace. Market. Yeah, I basically do. <laughs> no, because the thing is, I'm kind of like, that's your brain rot. Sometimes I replace it. I mean, I still brain rot, but sometimes I try and replace it because I'm like, I need, I need to do this, but like productive. And then I'll just go on Facebook Marketplace and start sending people shit they might want. <laughs> Dude, that's funny as fuck. I'm dead as hell. But yeah, so we found this crazy ass, big ass sound system plus extra for like. I think it was 1800 mm -hmm. and he was like hmm? and i was like ah fuck it damn see, i, <laughs> so I get, just threw yeah. down like 1800 cash she was just fucking tired of like like renting it's a yeah. hassle yeah. it's a fucking it's a fuck hassle headache. like do you have sound oh you're gonna charge me this and you have to run it fuck you yeah i was yeah. like we'll make it back eventually yeah. yeah and like everything that we didn't need i ended up like like reselling to people in the scene for like 
cheaper. Mm -hmm. Like, I think I sold, like, two mains that needed a little work to, like, Toten House for, like, I can't remember the exact price, but it was, like, 100, 150. Yeah. That's how trickle down should work. Y'all yeah. know Toten House? Yeah, we do know Toten House. Hell yeah. Buda. Um, <laughs> Represent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love those motherfuckers. Nah, they're, they're cool. Awesome. Though. I fuck with them. Um, yeah. I, like, took him to Toten House, like, before we started doing shit, right? It was, it or was no, it was after. Yeah. Okay, well, I had already been going to Toten House. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you need to come to Toten House. It's oh, special. yeah, she talked it up. She was just like, yeah, it's basically, like, because it, I think. Right when we just started, like, talking, you sent me this video of somebody burning an effigy of a fucking, like, the earth and then smashing a guitar into the fire. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like yeah, this is at Toten House. I'm like, what the fuck goes on here? This sounds this is like, this is like, Mammal's Backyard. <laughs> Mammal's Backyard. It's like, it was like, it's like real Mad Maxi, like, low-key. There's like, like the, a bunch of chihuahuas running around. <laughs> yeah, freaking, dude, literally anything is, like, going, like, everything's going on at, the, at once there. It's crazy as hell. Yes, I love them. They're cool as fuck. But, um, why did I bring them up? Oh, uh, cause oh, you're, yeah. you're, you're talking you're about trickling speakers. down sound equipment. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I just like s sold pretty much everything we didn't need. And then we just like use the speakers. And then I was like, oh, we can just rent out sound to like whoever needs it because we do it really cheap, honestly. Like, yeah. um, we just have like an equipment fee and then like we have him charge hourly to run sound. Mm -hmm. So like, um, <laughs> there are people True. with like 12 inch passive mains that definitely are cheaper but like if you actually like want to run like a like if you if you trust yourself to get high capacity we are probably the cheapest like people that will do sound for you for sure and and i've i've seen <laughs> i've seen how you operate at the shows too you're so fucking dialed in yeah like any yeah. little thing that sounds off you're like like it's, like it's quick as fuck. I don't have booth monitors, so I'm running back and forth to hear how it sounds in the mains, and I'm just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> if I had like unlimited money, yeah. I would have one of those like mixers where you can use the iPad. Yeah, I've like yeah. rented one before for like Thanks for Existing one mm -hmm. from like January, but like they're expensive. Yeah. Can we can we go into Thanks for Existing? That yeah. that's like more like an art art show, correct? Yeah. Okay. Can you like talk about that? Cause I, I I've never been to one. So like. Thanks for Existing One was like my baby. Like that was like my passion project. I didn't know if anyone was gonna come to that. Like we had like success from like Bloodbath and we knew that people liked coming to my shows at Private Park, mm -hmm. right? And like, I just really wanted something more intimate. And like, I wanted to highlight some Screamo cause I was like super into like the Screamo, like more intimate, like maybe bedroom Screamo and like the sub genres of Screamo. Oh, yeah. And then like also like showcasing art, like I felt like I hadn't really seen like an art show that was more like alternative, but like in a different way. Yeah. I don't really know how to express and it. And like more inclusive too. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So like, um, I reached out to Mothership Studios cause like, I reached out to a bunch of different venues again and I was like, no, you guys are too expensive. Yeah, yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> and I was talking to Mothership and Jacqueline from Mothership actually like, gave me a great deal. Mm -hmm. She's so awesome. I'm having it again there. On the 19th. Yeah. Plug. Of October. Today is October. Mm? Yeah. Wow. It's today is October. October. Today is October 7th. <laughs> <laughs> it's so soon. Okay. Hey, oh my God. It's in less than October 19th. It'll be out on Friday, so it'll be before. So. Holy crap. Oh yeah. my God. Hell yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. Plug. Anyway. Default Plug. project. <laughs> yeah. Tommy no, 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 no. Let's talk about it later. <laughs> okay. The, getting the plugs out the way in the middle. <laughs> <All right. coughs> we haven't even hyped it yet. Babe. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> All my words spoke for themselves. I'm dead as fuck. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I just wanted to throw like an art show, music show hybrid because I love art and music, and I'm like, I think they go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And like, I had a lot of friends and like, like looked up to a lot of people that created beautiful art, but I wasn't close with them, and like, I wanted to be like. Hey, yeah. show art at my show. Hell yeah. And it was like super awesome because I feel like it brought people closer together. A lot of people met each other because of things for existing. I made these special wristbands. Do I have some in the car or no? Uh, you Are you might, wearing yours? I'm not wearing mine. Fuck. Damn. Pain. I would give you guys both one, but if I can't give you both one, then I'm like, fuck. Because I have more at home. Anyways. 
So I made special Don't look at me like that. Rock, paper, scissors. Anyway. <laughs> he starts side-eyeing the shit out of me. You guys will get them eventually. All right, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> but I made these special glow-in-the-dark wristbands that say thanks for existing. Oh, that shit's fire. Oh. And they have, like, my bat all over them. That's fire as fuck. show the camera. Oh. It's, like, neon. I'll zoom in. No plug, sex emo. We'll do it. <laughs> yeah, that's so cute. Yeah. That's fire. Yeah. And they're like glow in the dark. And um, I just made them because <coughs> it's really cute. I don't know. Thanks for existing is like my art account name. And I've had my art account for a while. Mm -hmm. But I never post on it. Yeah. But I just think it's a cute name. Like it's like genuinely how I feel. And, and like, it, like it fits with the vibe for sure. Yeah. With the, with the artsy like, and the more intimate The setting. art and music is like thanks for existing. It's like I'm just like grateful that it all exists. And it's yeah. kind of like my love letter to the world. Like I feel like it's me in a show. That's badass. Yeah. You know what I mean? I love that. That's sick as So book. that was like, especially like after it had happened, I was like, wow, that was my favorite show that I've ever done. And it's like the lowest turnout because it's a smaller space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You that know? entire show is actually archived on YouTube. But it's the most personal. That's true. I, wa I watched them. Yeah. He spent so many hours editing them together. I, yeah. I like got them because like that was where we used the CQ-18, the multi-track recorder. Mm -hmm. And uh, I basically like I kind of took over like the production, like uh, head of production role for that. And I uh, like... Uh, we rented a CQ-18 so I could do multi-track recording. Mm -hmm. uh, we got like three uh, camera people, probably four camera people, like dedicated camera people. Gave them s uh, SD cards, like like paid them for the for their services and stuff like that. That's got fire. the SD cards back, loaded them all in, and just I just edited the entire thing archival style. Like I, I first put the the stems in Ableton and mixed every like all the tracks in. Jesus. And then I put it over, and this was like just me, and it took probably like what almost a month to do. That was that's so. I wild. think that part was your idea too. It was, yeah, and I I, I had a lot of fun with it. I like because I I don't know like I don't because you, you genuinely enjoy yeah it's it. fun yeah. to do yeah, I wanted, yeah like I wanted to mix a live show at least once. I'll, now that I've done it, I'll do it again. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's so wild. You mixed every single like. Yeah, that was all me. That is fucking yeah. Crazy. The video editing is super fun, too. Like, you can see my friend Lizzie, like, climbing to the top of, like, the weird roof thing, like, on yeah, a ladder and that. then jumping off. And everyone catches her perfectly. She just didn't even go down. That's just, like, crazy. floating on hands. <laughs> That's, That's not going to happen again, though, because I, yeah. Yeah, we promised Miss Jacqueline. I was like, we'll be a little less rowdy this time. It's an art studio. Yeah, yeah. okay. There was, like, a lot of, like, writing on the walls because I was like, oh, it's chalk. It's okay. And, like, we couldn't take it off. Oh, no. Yeah. And so I, like, gifted them some, like, new primer and, like. Oh, okay. I was just like, I'm so sorry. Because you want to use it. You don't, you don't want to make, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We had yeah, no yeah. will on it or anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a real art gallery. Like, they have actual, like, exhibitions there, like, all the time. Mm-hmm. Not to say that things for existing is not an actual exhibition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who you know what I mean? Who's to say it won't be though? Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. It we is. Had to, we had yeah. to, we had to clean up our reputation with, with Jacqueline after that. <laughs> had to make nice. I, I, I make had nice. to make amends. Yeah. Yeah. She likes me. She likes me. Yeah. That's crazy as fuck. Um, go, yeah. Going uh, into the the more screamo stuff like that, I wanted to like touch back on like y'all's like childhood and like what y'all were listening to Ooh. like whenever y'all were like growing up. Cause that's like a question I ask everybody on here and it's like, I get a different answer every time. So, so since you're like more tapped into screamo, I want you to, I want to hear like what you're like listening to, like, like say like middle school or, or like, Ooh, okay. Middle school is how old? Like, a le like 12 to like 13, something like that. Maybe. Yeah. Like yeah, 12 to okay. 11 to 13. Yeah, My timeline's kind of weird because like this isn't super relevant to music. So I'm not going to go into the whole backstory of this, but like, I started community college when I was 12. What? Yeah, like I graduated like high school when I was 12. What the fuck? She's um, on the news, look her up. Which is why I have my master's already. Oh, what And the that's hell? why I have time to do all this show stuff. Because uh, I work three days a week teaching genetics at Texas State. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy as fuck. Yeah, random. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll leave like, it if you want me to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it's just not relevant to the music stuff. But that's fucking nuts though. That's crazy <laughs> as fuck. Like, how, how is that even possible? Weird Asian parents. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> all I needed to say, really? Yeah. Anyways. Um. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What were you saying? Music. What you were listening to. Oh. So, like, 
All I had was like Pandora and Tumblr. Damn. So like That's a good mix though. I like when I was like 12, I was reading these fiction books and then I was like drawing fan art for the fiction books and posting it on Pinterest and then the author of my favorite fiction series saw my fan art and was like, "Oh my god, you're so awesome." And then we were like low key talking. And then like <laughs> <laughs> And then and she had like playlists for all of the characters in her book. And my favorite character, his name is Morpheus. Uh-huh. It was splintered by A.G. Howard. I'm sure, like, if I tried to read it again, I'd be like, what the fuck? Uh-huh. <laughs> but, like, he was, like, this, like, super pale guy with, like, long, dark hair. And, like, he lived inside a mirror or, like, whatever. It's, like, a weird adaptation of Alice in Wonderland. Oh, and I would okay. read this under the stairs in my community college. Wow. Because <laughs> I, was, I was emo. Yeah. Right? And so... I went to her Spotify and I was like listening to the playlist she made for him and I was like listening to like Muse, Three Days Grace, freaking Incubus, <laughs> freaking um, what else is there? I don't know, a bunch of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then like, so I was getting into like all that stuff and then from Tumblr it was like Mitski, like Marina and the Diamonds, you know, like really? classic girl stuff. Like I'm a girl. Yeah. And so, like, it was, like, all of that stuff, and then I was getting older and getting into, like, pop punk, Midwest emo, just, like, everything. And then, especially during COVID, I joined this emo Discord server, and, like, they low-key opened my world. Really? Like, to, like, screamo, specifically. Like, you went down the rabbit hole. Yes. I became obsessed. Yep. It happens like that. <laughs> and, uh, it's a canon event. It is. It's canon For event. For sure. And, like, they were so awesome. Like, because of them, I've had the opportunity to make, like, album art for, like, my German friend, Xiao. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, like, I got really into this band called Snoras. I think they're from, like, Norway or something. Mm. And, like, when I found them, they had, like, 200 listeners. And I've just been, like, talking about them on Instagram since I was, like, 16. Damn. Are they popping now? They are. I will, I don't know how popping they are, oh. but I think they have way more listens now. Anyways, that's how I got into Screamo, uh. and, like, I just, like, kept getting more and more into Screamo because, like, as a person, like, I don't really get angry very easily. Like, I get, like, irritated or, like, mm-hmm. but, like, most of the time I'm really just, like, whatever, or, like, maybe I over-intellectualize my emotions, but most of the time I'm just, like, this just makes me sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I don't really get, like, mad. Yeah. So whenever I listen to Screamo, like, I'm just like, yes! Like, if I know I need to be feeling mad, I'll listen to Screamo. Hell yeah. Or I'll listen to the story so far. Real. <laughs> yeah. Very That's real. I've seen them, like, man. four or five times. Very real, Sam. Oh, my God. I used to have these friends in Dallas where, like, every time they would play in Dallas, I would go up to Dallas because I lived in Killeen. And, like, those far, specific yeah. friends, like, we would scream the lyrics into each other's faces. We knew every song. Damn. I was like, yeah. That's wild as fuck. Yeah, I, was a, I was a really, really big fan of the story so far. Like, That's the whole so era, like, Man Overboard. Fuck oh, my God. No, you were a pop punk kid. Yeah. yeah like, Real like Friends, Knuckle Punk. Music. Yep. Oh, yeah. Good era. Yeah. Oh, my God. Did you know they used to get so mad when you say Knuckle Pook? <laughs> that, 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 you, that YouTube guy, I, I forgot what the fuck, fuck his name. He, he made shirts with that shit, and they, like, threatened to sue him. Like, they That's took, they took that shit to heart. I remember whenever I met them at Warp Tour, some girl wore the shirt and they denied her a picture and she oh. and she literally started crying. Like like I'm talking like hyperventilating, like I didn't think like like she was like young. She was like younger yeah. than me. I was like 15, 16, she was like twelve. Are and you, they like literally stuff? made her like 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 she was like hyperventilating and shit and her parents were there and they were just like standing there like, Are y'all really like not gonna like that's like, it was awkward as fuck. We're just all, <laughs> everyone's standing in line. It's like 105 degrees outside. Fuck. We're just like, like, it's humid as fuck. About to start raining. We're like trying to get I our love pictures. Man. I went three times and it stopped. That's what I was about to say. I never got to fucking go. What, what's your opinion on it coming back and being no, owned by a live the same. nation? You now. can't bring it back. You can't. can't. You can't. That's, why? why I, did I, they? I don't like the idea of it coming back, <laughs> like, at all. No. They just didn't make enough money or something? It made a lot of money. <laughs> like, no, like, I think he means why did they stop? I think yeah. it was just a logistical nightmare. Like, and also, Kevin Lyman's hella old now. He's, like, in his, like, early 60s now. Kids started listening to fucking, fucking little peak. <laughs> you literally... I mean, <laughs> honestly, yeah, like, the market shifted. Yeah. They I wanted... They, so. they, yeah. they stopped listening to, like, yeah. post-punk. They started listening to emo rap. Yeah, the seven-year span Suicide Boys people and started listening peak. to SoundCloud shit, and Vans was like, okay, pack it up. That low-key fried... Uh, 
like my brain honestly i'm not gonna <laughs> lie because i was only listening i like i hated mainstream like in high school i yeah, hated yeah, like yeah. Like I don't want to listen to Drake. I don't want to listen to uh, Kendrick or whatever. I want to listen to fucking Juice World, un archived songs and shit. Like yeah. it was just like so. Great. Did you ever have that face? I I I I'm not gonna lie. I was pretty like loyal to a single fucking electronic label, and then I started going out from there. So when I was like 14, I started listening to Monster Cat until I was like 16 or 17. And then I started like before that it was just fucking classic rock or whatever, like mm -hmm. yeah. But then I started listening to that, and then I like went out into more of the electronic stuff. And uh, but yeah, I uh, kind of had that same thing where it was just like yeah, if, if it I don't it, like I would be on SoundCloud, and if it had more than thirty thousand likes, I just wouldn't play it. <laughs> Real. I was super indignant. Very niche. Yeah. <laughs> About the Suicide Boys stuff, I actually, like, when I was 18, I went to Grey Day by myself mm -hmm. just to see Turnstile. Oh, shit. Damn. <laughs> and, like, I was, like, maybe one of, like, six people that was fucking with Turnstile. Wow. Like, the pit opened, and it was, like, so big because nobody wanted to be in there. And I was like, <laughs> what are you, aren't you guys hard? Yeah. Like, I was like, what the fuck? They're so fucking massive now. It's crazy. They're huge now. They were, like, not super popular before. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I saw them actually at a co-op. Damn, that's that's crazy. For real? In dating yourself? In, 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 yeah, I'm dating myself like a <laughs> motherfucker. Uh, with Curb Goop and Black Smurf, and then they also played the basement of Kurova. That's it's like so it's rich. a it's a dead venue, but like their basement. Wait, what co-op did they play? Um, oh my god, um, I, I can, I gotta look at the flyer. Does it, it still it, exist? No. It, oh. Um, this was 2015. This was uh. I was in high school. But I can look through my Facebook and tell you where it was at. I got holy look. shit. My memory's so kind of you're wild. like experience. I've been going to shows since I was twelve. You're like a local scene veteran. Mm. <laughs> He's like, don't say that, but I, yes. I, I was just one of those kids that was like always down for whatever. Like I would go to like bullshit ass shows too. Like, I, but I was one of those kids that would be like at everything. Yeah. Like, even if it was just like some bullshit ass like SoundCloud rapper, like I was at everything. I mean, like you're the type of person and I was really supportive. Going, yeah, I was like really yeah, yeah. supportive. Like that was like another thing. Like I was just really into like that culture, like that yeah. whole era. Well, even like before then, like I was really in just DIY music and underground music as a whole. Yeah. But yeah, they played at a co-op. I gotta look it up. But um, and the Crova basement, and then they also played this spot in Houston that's like literally like a 75 person cap, if that. That's fucking <laughs> And nice. that, no, it was more than that. Like, it was bad. Like, it was like a mini Astro World from what I heard. Oh, fuck. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, they, they played Jesus. some, the co ops have some crazy lore low key. Damn. Like, there's some crazy, especially with Pearl, there's some insane yeah. Pearl lore. Like, from after the arc? Like, from like 17, 18, 19, like, Pearl Street. And Ethan called it Treetop, but what's it actually called? Fuck. Twenty first. Yeah, twenty first. Oh, um, but like, I can see why they'd be called Treetop. But there was a lot of lore be between those two cops specifically. Like, yeah, especially during that time, like the emo rap. Like, there was a lot. There was. There was hella emo rap. There, the, yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. Um. Young Gravy was supposed to play a show before it got shut down. Um, there was this whole festival there. Yeah, yeah so it was like Braxton festival. Knight. It was like Braxton Knight, Convolk, um, Anti World. Um, so there was a dude named Bubby Main, Bobby McCrutchen. He works, or he used to work at No Comply yeah. Skate Shop, and he is a producer. He produced like mad shit for Young Gravy, especially back then. And he was supposed to be the headliner before it got shut down. Shit. Mm -hmm. But it was that was at Pearl. It was going on for like like four hours, and then it yeah, shut down. my my friend jumped off the balcony. Was it? Did Curtis jump too? It was Trey. Damn yeah, balcony. Tra they, yeah, they were off of Morning Glory Seeds and they jumped off the balcony. Morning Glory Seeds? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck is that? I don't even know it. Shit? No, like, I don't even know it. So <laughs> it's called like LSA, but like it's this, it's these uh, seeds and you can eat them and it makes you trip fucking like, in, like it's like a different kind I of. I had no idea it was that. I thought they were just drunk. <laughs> but <laughs> but it, it's like, it's like a ketamine, like very like drowsy, like weird wonky high that is but great. they that horrible. they jump from the pearl balcony into the water with their phone in their pocket yeah and they, they were cooked and yeah and they were cooked and they walked all the way to target on campus and got new pants and <laughs> they didn't give a while tripping phone. while tripping <laughs> they literally left pearl walked all the way to target and got new pants and someone had to go get them 
That's crazy as fuck, bro. Shout, shout Trey, I miss you. Wherever you are, I miss shout you. Trey. <laughs> ah, damn. Yeah. Okay, what about your music, Chase? Oh, I don't know. Uh, you talking like I like I said, I was just pretty much into uh, electronic. I mean, there wasn't really that much of a. Honestly, like when it comes to like like culture, I was never really part of a scene until I came here, because mm-hmm. like Memphis is is. Like if it's popping, you might get shot. You know. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's not nothing really like goes that well over there. There's actually some pretty cool. Actually, uh, Memphis Pestilence. Shout out them. Shout out uh, Big Money Deathcraft. My homie Alex. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Looks around. <laughs> he's like he's right. Like he's here. <laughs> no 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 no. Basically, like I went to this like podunk school in like fucking like south of Memphis, and. Uh, there's this one dude with a fucking descendant sticker on the back of his uh, back of his SUV, and uh, like he was okay, but we were, like we're in the same scene, but never really talked. And then like as I'm like in Texas, I see Memphis Pestilence start popping up. Hannah, I think, finds them. Like she does literally everything. We were gonna go to Memphis, and yeah. I was like, "Oh, I wonder what's happening in the DIY scene." So I looked up <laughs> Memphis on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, there was he's like starting this hardcore thing, and like like it's I, I don't know if it's a label or if it's just like they just throw shows, but like it's uh it's it's they're making a scene out there. Yeah, they're making a scene, but it's from the fucking ground, cause like Damn. yeah, there's I mean. I, shout I out to Haven House. Yeah, shout out Haven House. Uh, what was the other spot? That's the warehouse. Oh, yeah. Shout out Haven House. Shout out Haven House. Yeah. <laughs> Haven House. This is the type of shit that just was not there even before COVID. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, like, like rappers, got, but you can even add, like, like, there's a ton of rappers from Memphis now that are like, yeah, man, like, best thing I did was get the fuck out of Memphis. Nothing to do there. Yeah. You know, you yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. You know, you, you, Key Glock was talking about, like, yeah, I mean, that, like, nothing like you go to the mall i guess shop <laughs> online like there's nothing to do there that's crazy but yeah i mean you kind of like start like creating stuff in a vacuum and and like you know making like making music and then you have to kind of make an objective stance that like you know what i don't fucking know what my friends are listening to like they're mm-hmm. listening i don't know the, the country they listen to the little peep i mean like yeah it's stuff like that but it's like I mean, I, I'll find like the two or three rappers that I that I can like work with, and I'll just work with them until I get really good. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, that was basically all I could do there. So when, when did you come down here? It was like 2021. It was basically after my 21st birthday, and I was like, I I, I don't I don't really uh I don't really see this going nowhere. Yeah. So I just came. I uh, had a friend who was here. Uh, crashed on his couch for like I don't know like a year because oh, he damn. yeah. And then I uh, got my own spot, and I've been here for, what, yeah, three years now? Oh, yeah. Damn, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, all the way from Memphis. Yeah. I, just, I always find that so crazy. Like, people, like, from all parts of the world just come into the San Marcos or yeah, Kyle. Right? Like, what the heck? You didn't come here for college or anything. No. Yeah, that's what I was about to Texas ask. State. I just fucking drove here. Yeah. That's so crazy. Yeah, no, I was like, my, my friend was like, hey, you want to come over here and hang out for, like, I don't know, a couple weeks? I was like, I don't know if my car can make it there, but there and back. And he was just like, You're yeah. You're not going back. <laughs> yeah. Can it make it here? <laughs> Damn, that's we'll badass. See. Yeah. And now, like, it's so crazy. That little decision just fucking, like, changed everything pretty much. I, imagine the little decisions that changed, like, crazy shit, you know? Yeah. Even if you may never know. That's fucking nuts, dude. I enjoy those little decisions. Um, So, like, so now y'all are, what, like, two years into the into the show event event scene? Something like that. Like, just under, maybe? Yeah. 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 Um, so what, like, what, what's like future plans? Like what, what do y'all, where do y'all want to take this? Um, honestly, we're just having fun. Yeah. I like that. Like, I don't know what Caleb's plans are, but like, I enjoy like the fact that it is like community building. Mm -hmm. And like, if I feel like it's not doing that for me, then I won't do it. You know what I mean? That's real as fuck. Hell yeah. Yeah. Like if I feel like it's not constructive as a whole, I'm like, "Eh." Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you don't want to feel like like you're forced to do it. Exactly. And, like, I I feel like I space them out well enough for it to, like, mean something every time. For sure. You don't want to do it every week. And to make it make sense. Yeah, because then it feels like I'm, like, a machine, like, churning out. And then, like, why would anybody go to that? Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? That's so real. Yeah, I I was hoping, like, I figured that's what the answer was going to be. Yeah. But, like, hearing hearing you say that, I'm like, damn, that's real as fuck. Because (laughs) every event that I've been to has felt, like, so, like, 
important like we should have just said we were gonna start booking for emos, <laughs> emos? <laughs> troll troll everybody yeah <laughs> that's funny as fuck. yeah actually this is about to be my last social show, show out or yeah. go home <laughs> no but like i feel like most of this like most of this stuff is just in service of the community like in, in service of the people that we met and the people that like you know have shown love so far like yeah it's kind of just like oh you like this <laughs> keep on doing it you know yeah, giving back at least for for me it's that's that's one of the main would you say so? Huh? Would you say so? That what? That it's for other people? Well, no, just like that it's it's kind of like in service of the scene that like like the community that we brought together like you know your friends, your people I mean, that are close I guess to you. So, but like in a roundabout <laughs> way, like me doing anything for myself is doing stuff for the community and me doing stuff for the community is me doing stuff for myself. I'm mm -hmm. like we're all like one big glob. Yeah. You know what I mean? Facts. Like, I don't really see it as... Imagine like, us all, but, like, our skin is taken away and we're just, like, <laughs> brought together via gravity into this one flesh sphere. Flesh that's, uh, yes. that's every one of your shows? Flesh <laughs> Some, like, Hellraiser Jamie, put, yeah. up, put that up right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny as fuck. <laughs> Jamie, pull up flesh sphere in, on the Hudson River. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead as fuck. What is that? What? Is that real? He's memeing. Yeah, I don't know. Did he make that up? He did. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's goaded for that. That's lit. Hey, there you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so <laughs> that was that. <tight. laughs> that that tambourine just fucking put me in a trance for a second. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I that's what I notice every time I go to y'all's events is I notice that that everyone it's like camaraderie. Like everyone is like getting along. Like everyone's like talking, like chatting it up with each other. And I really appreciate that y'all are doing that for like the scene, whether it be San Marcos or Austin, because um, this scene like. I feel like you guys are opening up an avenue for so many other people to do the same same thing, and y'all aren't like we said earlier. Like you don't you don't want a gatekeeper or anything yeah. like that. You're like you're putting people on in turn of that, which is badass. And I just feel like, um, like the more the more events that y'all do, like the bigger like like the names are gonna be there, like like band wise. And um, like do y'all have any like any dream bands or performers that you would want to book like in the near future that you haven't yet? <laughs> <laughs> well honestly hook i really wanted to book hooky mm -hmm. and like we saw them like or i found them on college radio oh, wow. like maybe like a year ago mm -hmm. like i found them on ktsw what is that that's the san marcos like texas state oh, college radio damn, i don't even i don't even got, I don't even got that station 89.9 <laughs> yeah oh yeah you guys probably don't get that out here no i don't but, think uh, ranger doesn't pick that one up <laughs> But yeah, I was just like listening to college radio one day because my aux cord was broken in my old car. Mm -hmm. And like the song came out. I was like, wait, this is dope as fuck. I wonder what song it was. And then the song cuts off and the audio person goes, that was blank by hooky. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. well, thank you. So, <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. So I was like, damn, hooky's kind of fire. And then we went on this Philly trip. And like before the Philly trip, I was like looking to see what fucking shows were going to happen in Philly. And I was like, in all the venue pages, in all the tag photos yeah, yeah. of all like the, you know, how I find bands is like, I go into the tagged photos and I find flyers and I see who they've played with. And then I see who they've played with and I see who they've played with oh, and I wow. see where they've played. I just be like. <laughs> just digging through it, digging through it. Yeah. And so that's, that's how crazy. I found out that Hookie was playing while we were going to be there. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, that's dope as fuck. Hell yeah. So we went and saw them, and then I accidentally met their booking manager, Pauline. Uh -huh. And I was like, whoa, bro, that's epic. Like, How coincidental this is. <laughs> you know, shows in Texas, you should hit me up. And they actually hit me up like half a year later. Oh, wow. That's badass. It was badass. crazy. Hell yeah. It was crazy. So honestly, Thanks for Existing 2 is going to be like my dream come true. Hell yeah. When, when is that? October 19th. 19th. Y'all heard it October here. 19th <laughs> at Mothership Studios from 8? to one i think it's eight to one. Hell yeah yeah so it's gonna be hooky and tommy fleece from detroit y'all should listen like these are good ass fucking acts yeah like, y'all put you're putting me on i've been listening to tommy fleece since like what like 22 really maybe yeah that was just that you one did not song tell me that like tethered oh yeah okay i've had that one y'all y'all are putting me on i'm about to look up all these people <laughs> yeah. too uh, or yes. go to the show go to the show and find out yeah. right See them in Actually, person. do that. Do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then listen to them after. So, Hooky. So, they do, like, really fun, like, indie, electro, like, 
I don't know. It's just, like, different. When we saw them, I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. How is it two guys with a fucking pad and, like, a guitar and, like, vocal God. effects and it's so lit? That's crazy. Like, why is it so lit? It's literally, like, like a guitar and a mic into an SP404 Mark II and then into, like, this, uh, I don't I keep forgetting, like, T7 mm-hmm. or a Roland module. And it, they're just sitting there doing stutter effects, doing, like, fucking around with the effects on it. It's It's the craziest show. Damn. It's just it was two just, guys. I'm gonna have to pop I out. Yeah. I have to pop it was out a for that show shit. at like Photo Club in Philly, and like the show was calm until they started playing, and everybody started like crowding in and like bouncing around. Oh, I was damn. like, what the fuck? It was hot as hell, and bro had a fucking pu- or like a, like a fur coat on. <laughs> Would not take dedicated it. Dedicated to the craft. Would yes. not take it off. That's crazy. As Try hell. that shit in Texas. Not and then Tommy real. Fleece. Shout out to my friend Loren for telling me that I should reach out to him because that's the reason I did. Okay. And um. He's awesome. And then Default Project, which is Caleb and our friend Ember. Was that where y'all were playing uh, Body Mechanics? Yeah, yeah. That yeah. shit was sick as fuck. Yeah, we're going to try and do something a little different. We're going to try and be more, like, fitting to, to the vibe. Because we're going to be the ones setting it all, you know, kind of setting up the, you know, what people are going to be listening to. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's not going to be as much techno. It's going to be more kind of, like, ambient. We're trying to figure out exactly what Dude. pocket we want to fit. That is fire. But, we're yeah. welcoming the dance vibes, though. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> there will be dancing, but there's that. I'm, I'm fucking trying to teach myself touch designer right now. Because he's also making the projection art. So, yeah. like, oh, not only wow. is for this Thanks for Existing, not only is there going to be, like, art and then, like, the artists, like, the, the bands and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also gonna be like a projector okay. that like goes like with the beat. Yeah. Oh, that's if you can make it happen. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna bring my whole ass desktop for that. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I'm Fuck. just gonna have like. I'm gonna have. Uh, put it behind and... bulletproof glass or something to protect, I, protect that yeah, shit. Something. Just in case. I could actually just put it on top of the. Oh yeah. 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 yeah I'm literally discussing plans. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck who cares. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. But yeah, no, I, I I hope to get that one. It's gonna happen. I just don't know if it's gonna be buggy. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Y'all are so fucking creative with like the shit. Cause like I remember what fucking uh like blew me away was whenever y'all were promoting Bloodbath One when he fucking did the the uh, stigmata on his back for the oh, promotion. Yeah. That shit was so fucking <laughs> Bro, cool. Bro, I used to do SFX makeup like there was no tomorrow. Like I used to do SFX makeup in my room, like at my parents' house. Like, I was maybe, like, 15, because I was, like, obsessed with horror movies. Yeah. I loved horror movies. I loved gore. Like, the, the like classic, like, pla- uh, practical effects. Mm-hmm. Like, that 80s, like, yeah. crazy shit. Yeah. That's just And so, like, I would just do that shit on my face, like, all the time. And I took a long hiatus, because, like, I just, like, forgot about it. But I still had all the stuff. And I was like, bloodbath. <laughs> they carve it into my boyfriend's back. That shit was so fire. His mom texted me and was like, or no, his mom texted him. Yeah. And was like, please tell me that's not actually in your back. Dude, that shit was insane. It looks so real, too. Really? It's still there. Dang, Shows. Yeah. <laughs> that shit was so crazy. Yeah. yeah, y'all put so much dedication to like everything y'all do, which is oh so like God. badass. Actually, I'm surprised that taking it off didn't scar me. Oh, oh. taking it off was hard. We, I even put like liquid latex down first so it would be easier to remove. Because mm-hmm. like there's a liquid latex and then there's a scar wax which you actually carve into. Oh, wow. And then I had to like paint into the scar wax with the alcohol paint and like the fake blood and like lip gloss, whatever. We, we yeah. missed one specific, uh, one specific detail and that was that my back had hair on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it was bad. Pulling it off piece by piece. She was sitting there we were like fucking, rolling it up. Yeah, like with a fucking Stop. butter knife. Like, yes, I know yes. this hurts. Just bear with me. <laughs> That's so crazy. Yeah. It was really bad. It was worth it though. Dedicated to the craft it was fun we, yeah. got, that, we got we got so many pictures from that that nobody saw damn it was just like yeah me sitting in like some fucking scaffolding like just, <laughs> just yeah you can see the, the shit on my back that yeah. shit is cool as fuck well damn we've been going on for an hour 40 um is there any yeah. is there anything y'all y'all want to plug anything y'all want to shout out talk talk about the floor is y'all's um definitely come to thanks for existing too because that one is definitely like both my baby and like he's also putting like hella effort into that as well like he's like honestly like if i think about it like it's like our baby because like thanks for seeing one he like did all that crazy ass video editing and like mm-hmm. all that shit 
And then for this one, like he's gonna be doing the projection. I think we're doing the videos again, but maybe with like less video cameras. Yeah. But he's still gonna like edit and like do like the multi-track stuff. It's gonna be way easier because it's le it's not like full bands, so it's like what yeah. three inputs per act. Yeah, it's and it's only better. like, I think, three acts and a back-to-back -back DJ set. Actually, with my friend Loren that I mentioned earlier and our friend Chloe, mm -hmm. so awesome. Um, it's it's literally their first back to back. I think it's gonna be freaking legendary. Like, two of the best DJs ever. Damn. Ever, and they're both girls. I'm like, I can't miss that. They what said they're gonna do a dress to impress set. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> uh, that that that'd be sick if like people actually played dress to impress in there. Yeah. <laughs> During that shit. Yeah. That'd be crazy as fuck. What we're saying is the uh, the Austin San Marcos scene is a matriarchal society, and we intend to keep it that way. Right. It's honestly, like, something that we have been talking about. Like, like a lot of the really big bookers, like Christina, mm -hmm. like, in, like, the co-ops, and then, like, me and San Marcos, Hannah Fulkerson, when she was throwing shows, like, she might still. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, I don't know. It's just a lot of girls. Mm -hmm. And, like, I Run, think... Running the scene right now. I know, yeah, it's right? Fucking, like, it's kind of wild. badass. I'm, like, I love that it's, like... Mostly like women of color. I'm like, that's fire. Yeah, that shit. That shit's fucking powerful as fuck. That shit's badass. I see everything that that uh, Christine. Or I, I don't even know. Like that Moon Babies, Moon Babies doing that shit's fucking insane. And like, like y'all are like all like it's like a tree, and y'all are like branching off and like, like doing y'all's own thing. But like y'all yeah. still show each other love all the time. Oh, for which sure. is badass. Like yeah. it's like a like I said camaraderie. It's so it's sick because that in the scene it doesn't really exist. Like yeah, that. or it hasn't for a while, but now it does again, which is like we shouldn't be competition. No, right. like we should just be like everybody wins. Literally. Yeah, exactly. Everyone can win if y'all exactly. want to. Oh wait, we forgot to shout out Loren as well. another another planner. Yo. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shoot, yeah. Loren is throwing something with Tommy Fleece as well. So like, actually, this is like the whole thing. So like, uh, Loren is throwing the fuck it wee ball. Okay. October eighteen with Saint John, our other friend. And um, I'm going to be the announcer of the king and queen. Oh, wow. Okay. At that show. And then, so my hookie run, hookie and Tommy Fleece is going to be like San Marcos, Austin, Houston. So like October 19, 2021. Okay. So like, it's going to be those three shows and like hookie like entrusted me with three Texas dates. I was like, holy shit. Yeah, God. I was about to say, damn, they, you're doing all three of those. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. So like. I know, like, Thanks for Existing is going to be fire. <laughs> because it's just, like, there's just so many heads involved in that one. Like, oh, yeah. it's me and Caleb and then all of the artists and then all of the, like, musicians and, like... It's a whole, like, army of people yeah. that are putting that shit together. Yeah, production exactly. crew. That's sick. And then fun. I'm actually working with um, not only the owner of the studio, but, like, one of the studio artists as well. And she's going to open her studio so people can come in and have it be like more interactive. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. That's sick as fuck. I know. It's going to be awesome. And then after Thanks for Existing, on the 20th is going to be the house show at Scissor House. And I don't, have you guys Where been to that? Scissor House? Where is that? It's in West Campus in Austin. Uh-uh. I, never I can't blast the address out, but like. Okay, yeah. If you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you can DM me if you're going to go to the show. DM. <laughs> DM for address. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like our friends have like lived there and like before our friends lived there, my other friend lived there. And so like it's just kind of recently become like this like show hub. Hell it's yeah. like super awesome. It's like it gets packed the fuck out. Is it like pretty like small and like intimate? Too? Oh, it's yeah. It's yeah. Tiny. Oh, shit. But it's like awesome. Hell yeah. So that one's going to be Hooky, Tommy Fleece, Foster Petit and Minor Issue who I had for Thanks for Existing 1. Those guys are, like, homies as well. Damn. So, uh, so you, like, you, um, all the bands that you book, like, they end up, like, becoming friends. And, yeah. like, yeah, that's, that's sick as fuck. You have, like, yeah. a whole, like, like, army of, like, like bookers, planners, uh, performers. Like, you have a whole fucking team. It's insane how many people, are, like, you have, like, helping you out with this stuff. Like, it's not, like. Yeah, it's never in a vacuum. I mean, that's how this shit is possible. Yeah. Because yeah, I mean, like, you fuck with us, it's up from there. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Oh, okay. what? <laughs> <coughs> um, so, so October nineteenth. Yeah. Um, go there. And do you have anything? Do you have anything to? Uh, I mean, uh, still some stuff in the works, but uh, follow True Step. Shout out True uh, Step. 
Yeah. Hell yeah. Follow the DJs. We got crazy crew. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. Cool, cool. Is it, so any shout outs, any fuck yous, anybody? or uh, we're... Uh, <laughs> I have no hate in my heart. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, shit, man. <laughs> yeah. Who's that? Bitch. Damn. Sorry, <laughs> Anyways, this has been another episode of The Artist Hour. This is uh, Hannah and Cable. We're sending this off right. We'll see y'all later. Peace out. Bye. Without the button. Oh hell no! Oh hell no! no. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you should do that one. It's re- it was recording it too. That's funny as fuck. Wait, oh really? no way! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's now the new one.